Oh, yeah. And now, our feature presentation. Yes. Salam Alaikum. Please be seated. Thank you for the honor and the privilege that is only granted to us by Almighty God Allah to come together as brothers and sisters constituting a divine family that Almighty God Allah has chosen to bring into a higher knowledge of who we are, who God is, and who other family members are all around our planet. May I first greet you with the greetings of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. I must say to you, whether you are few in number or large in number, that the most important person is you and your relationship to Almighty God Allah. I repeat that again. Even though we honor and respect all of the prophets, all of the messengers, and the divine scriptures that they bought to redeem fallen humanity, their message is one. Their message is to turn us totally to the devotion of one God. Islam came as a perfect expression through the uh, Prophet Muhammad, it, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, but not through the man, but what the man revealed or was revealed to him for the guidance of all of the people. So the Holy Quran main principle is what? divine unity. And when the people began to crowd around the Prophet in the mosques, the Holy Quran reveals this. The mosques are for the worship of Allah. The maintenance of the mosques are we who are the followers or the believers in this message that we honor and respect all whom God has sent to us up until this very day. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan does not look for or require or need our focus or devotion to him. He is the channel through which the divine is emanating. Do you follow? So therefore we can say truly God in person. Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi to whom praise is due forever, came to us as what? The embodiment of God in person. Do we understand what that means? Well, let's take a look at the scripture that was inspired to me this morning. I was preparing to come to the mosque and I always seek help from the Holy Quran to give me guidance. And these were the words that came. The self-accusing spirit rises up in the judgment. Whose self-accusing spirit are we talking about? Something from outside or something from within? Do we find ourselves often guilty of accusing others for our deviation or our sins if it had not been for that brother? <laughs> if it had not been for that sister, <laughs> I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. No, and so you're like a babbling brook where the real problem is in yourself, is in myself. And so God makes it very clear, very plain. And as I was reviewing this verse, the self-accusing spirit 
It is from Surah 75, which is called the resurrection. Are we in the resurrection? Oh, very good. <laughs> and then it says, Nay, I swear by the day of resurrection, nay, I swear by the self-accusing spirit. Does man think that we shall not gather his bones? Yea, we are powerful to make complete his whole make. Nay, man desires to go on doing evil in front of him. He asks, when is the day of resurrection? So when the sight is confused and the moon becomes dark and the sun and the moon are brought together, man will say on that day, whither to flee? No, there is no refuge. With thy Lord on that day is the place of rest. Man will that day be informed of what he sent before and what he put off. Nay, man is evidence against himself, though he put up excuses. The Holy Quran, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is a kind of divine scripture or message that speaks directly into the heart, the ear, the mind, the thinking of the person who is reading the Quran. So the message is directly to each and every one of us. Why am I saying this and why am I taking my time to review this? Because at the same time that that verse came, I was directed to another verse which appears in Surah 14, which is entitled Ibrahim. And in that verse it reads, and the devil will say, when the matter is decided, surely Allah promised you a promise of truth and I promised you, this is the devil talking, right? But what did he do? He failed you. And I had no authority over you, except that I called you and you obeyed me. You didn't listen to the still small God voice within. That is our only true guidance. We may listen to the divine word as expressed by all of the divine representatives, messengers, prophets of the past up until today, but are they responsible after a clear delivery of the message which guides you and me to take refuge in Allah and Allah alone? Why am I saying this? Because we are deviating from the path of the true worship of Almighty God Allah. Recently, my son, my daughter-in-law, and their family went to see a film, which many of you may have seen, down on the pier, Navy Pier, which is called Journey to Mecca. <laughs> 